Terrence McDevitt, a solution architect with Bluefish Development Group. Today we're going to talk about aspects and alfresco. We've had a lot of clients recently ask us questions about how they can implement uh, aspects in alfresco. Uh, it seems to be a little bit of confusion around how to do that, and so hopefully today we're going to make that a little bit more clear. So our purpose for today's video is to introduce aspects, how they work with alfresco, and in order to really make it easier for you to understand how aspects can be applied to your business problem. Uh, we've got a couple objectives today. We're going to go through a definition of what uh, aspects are. Uh, we'll actually talk about uh, how you define aspects in Alfresco and how you deploy those into the repository. Uh, and then we'll show you how to expose those aspects via sh the Share UI customizations. Um, this is going to be a three-part video series. The first part is going to be the intro that I talked about, what aspects are. The second part is going to be focused on uh, deploying those aspects, defining them and deploying them into Alfresco. And then the third part is going to be exposing those into the Share UI so that users can actually use the aspects. Um, what we're not going to talk about today uh, are a few things like AMP, AMP installation configuration. Uh, we're assuming that you've already seen how to do that. There's information on the wiki, the Alfresco wiki on that. Uh, we're not going to talk about bootstrapping any of your context files. I'll mention it, but we're not going to talk about it in detail. Um, and then we're also uh, not going to talk about details of content modeling that will be necessary for some of the aspect definition, uh, but there's some details that we're just not going to touch on in today's sessions. So uh, in order to sort of make aspects clear and why they're useful, we've got a, a little use case, a little scenario that we want to, to kind of walk through. Uh, and it really involves uh, contracts. So lots of our clients have a situation where they have document types that are contracts. Uh, that they could be a variety of types. They could be uh, MSAs, NDAs, uh, finance documents, legal documents. Uh, and some of those documents may need to have signatures applied, uh, as well as the date that the signature was actually captured. So um, it's a perfect scenario for aspects where you may want to be able to capture that information for some of those documents, uh, and you may not for others. So uh, aspects really make sense in that situation. So for part one of this video, uh, we're going to go ahead and walk through uh, sort of an intro to aspects through PowerPoint. Uh, and then when we're done with that, we'll move into part two, which is actually showing some code and really seeing how all this works in Alfresco. So before we start looking at aspects in Alfresco, I wanted to just give some general uh, definitions around what an aspect is and sort of how it can be used uh, in your content model. Aspects are not really specific to Alfresco. It's something that's been, been used in the development environment and development world for a long time now. Um, but uh, it may not necessarily be a familiar concept to people. So I wanted to start with just a basic overview of aspects. So in Alfresco, aspects give you the ability to add properties to node instances. Um, so why would that be important? Well, let's talk a little bit about how you would actually add properties sort of in the, the general you know, case of a content model in Alfresco. So there's a couple of different ways that you can add properties to nodes. You can, uh, you know, option one that I'm showing here is to um, just simply add the, the attributes that you want to existing types that you've defined in your content model. Um, in my example today, and actually the example that we're going to walk through um, in Alfresco, we've got uh, a number of corporate document types, uh, for example, contracts, NDAs, minutes um, for meeting minutes, um, reviews for things like performance reviews. Uh, and we've got uh, a desire to add some attributes or some properties to some of those types uh, in order to capture whether or not a document has been signed and when it's been signed. So there's, you know, one way we can do that is we can take the existing content model that we've got, we can apply uh, attributes to the types that we want to be able to uh, specify those attributes on. Uh, and that's fine. That's one way to do it. You could take the content model and, and modify those types and add those properties. The problem with this is that uh, there's a bunch of problems, actually, and this is not really the way we would recommend doing this at all. Um, in this model, you've got duplication of properties uh, across your types, and that, of course, increases the maintenance of your model. Um, Alfresco actually requires that property names be unique, even across types. So you can't have something called is document signed on the contract type and the NDA type. Uh, this isn't really suited for new types. So if you come along and say, hey, we've got a brand new corporate document type that now requires documents to be signed. Um, now you've got to go create a new type definition, which you would have to do anyway. But now you also have to bring over those duplicate property names. Um, so that's not really well suited for that. And then the other thing is that all instances of these types 
that you've defined these properties for will have these properties, whether you actually want them on those, on those types or not. Um, another option to add properties is to introduce the concept of a supertype. Uh, and um, if you're familiar with customizing Alfresco types and creating your own custom content types, then you're already familiar with the concept of a supertype. Most likely your types extend from uh, the out-of-the-box type called CM content. Um, and a super type in this case, what this would allow us to do is create sort of a corporate document type um, that we would then extend from uh, all the individual types that we have, contracts, NDAs, and so forth. Uh, and then we would just simply add the properties, the desired properties for the signature details on top of that corporate document type. Um, the nice thing about this is that it you know, kind of prevents the, the duplication of properties that we talked about. It makes maintenance a little bit easier. But um, th there are some issues with this, and that all again, similar to the, the previous option, all properties, would, all types would actually have these properties, whether they need them or not. All instances would, uh, but also actually all types would. So in the case of meeting minutes, for example, we may not actually care about having you know a signature field on meeting minutes. So, but with this model, all do all documents of that type would actually have those properties, whether they're used or not. Um, if you've already got nodes in your model, then this, this actually is a challenge because it's, it's difficult to go from uh, one supertype to another, if not impossible. If, you, if you, you have to do some migration, you'd have to actually really plan for this. Um, if you're starting fresh, then this is a, certainly a, an option to, go, you know, to look at, but if, you're, if you've got existing types, uh, it may be a little bit more difficult. Um, and then you also, it's really hard to remove uh, properties at this point. So once you've sort of created that, that super type, if you ever wanted to get rid of properties, you can certainly do that. Um, it's just a, a little bit more challenging than, than the third option that we're going to look at, which is aspects. So aspects uh, really introduce this concept of cross-cutting your content, your content types and your model. Uh, in the, the options that we looked at before, the properties are very closely associated with a particular type in the repository, whether that's um, a, a child type like a contract or an NDA or a super type like corporate documents. Um, aspects allow us to essentially define properties in the content model uh, and then be able to attach those properties to instances of uh, content types in the repository. So the way that we would do that is we would define that, that aspect in the content model. We would set up the same properties just like we would in, in option two that we just looked at. Uh, the difference is it's not associated directly with a particular type in the content model. In the repository, sort of at runtime, um, you then can define, okay, which of these instances, which of the contracts, or which of the NDAs have an aspect associated with them. Uh, and we're, we're showing that now. I can say, hey, I want to attach signature details to all of my contracts. I want to attach them to some of my NDAs uh, and some of my performance reviews. So you can selectively choose, either pro programmatically or manually, um, how you want your aspects to be associated or attached to instances of, of content types in the repository. The uh, nice thing about this model is you can also get rid of these. So if you want to take a particular instance of a contract or a review later down the line, you can easily remove that aspect from that instance and it will no longer have that property. So that's just a, a quick look at really the, the benefit of, of going the aspect route if you need to apply properties that sort of cross cut your content types in your repository. So just a quick recap on what we went through. Uh, we just discussed what aspects are, uh, why they're important, and how they can be used to apply properties to various node instances in the repository. Uh, and this is the end of part one of our three-part series on aspects. The next uh, part will we'll focus on the Alfresco repository tier and how you define aspects and install them into the repository. And thank you for watching. Don't forget to check out more videos on YouTube at BluefishTX.